Hey guys, it's Brother John here. So good to be with you. I'm here in my, my basement studio. Uh, I've just gotten back from Monticello, Kentucky. I'll tell you about that trip in just a minute. And I've got grandkids running around upstairs, and so it's, it's kind of wild around here. But this is our, our basement, and uh, it's where I have my horns. And I don't know if you could see my collection uh, over here. I'll go this way so you can see all my, my horns there. And and uh, this is kind of where I hang out and make a lot of noise. <laughs> um, hey, I, I'm just going to thank you all for, for praying for my mother. Let me, I'll give you the quick story. It'll just take a minute. Um, so Tuesday morning at about 9 a.m., uh, 9.30, I get a call from my mom. She goes, you wouldn't believe it. And I said, what happened? And she told me she had, she had been burgled. Her house had been burgled. And so this happened Tuesday morning. Now get this, Tuesday morning at 5 a.m., mom was laying in bed and saw someone in the bathroom, which is across from her bedroom, with a flashlight looking through her medicine cabinet. And she has roach spray on her, uh, her dresser, her nightstand, and she just picked up that roach spray, put it under her blanket, and just lay there and acted asleep. And in case the, the, the burglar would come into her room, she was going to, you know, but he didn't. And uh, her, her phone was disabled, uh, and, and everything it was pretty weird, but it was 5 a.m. Her next-door neighbor was actually fixing breakfast at that time that this is happening. So a pretty brazen guy. So anyway, all that to be said, I went to Monticello, Kentucky. It's a small town. It's a, a, a little uh, commuter town to the near uh, larger town, Somerset. And I went there, and um, we put a deadbolt on the, on the door. We changed uh, locks. We got um, uh, sensors put on her door. Um, I got, um, <clears throat> uh, let's see, oh, we changed her bank account because the thief took uh, took some medication, took a little bit of money, and took some deposit slips from her to get her routing number. So took that. So we changed her bank account. We did all sorts of stuff, and um, I just made it back. And so uh, thanks be to God, my mom's not only safe but doing well. I mean, by the time I got there, we had, we had pizza for dinner uh, Tuesday night and just hung out and talked, and she was in good spirits, and, and we got a lot of stuff done. So what I wanted to do today is I just wanted to touch base with you guys, briefly talk about Psalm 10 today, and, um, and just, again, thank you for your prayers. So Psalm 10 is another Davidic psalm, we think, we're pretty sure, um, but in this particular psalm, uh, there is at least a lot of theologians speculate that Psalm 9 and Psalm 10 were actually one psalm at one point. And one of the reasons they believe that is because there's no superscription there, uh, in Psalm 10. There's, there is nothing that says, for the choir director, played on this, or anything like that. It it's just starts right with the first verse of the psalm. And this psalm basically is a, a vindication psalm. It's, it's a psalm where uh, the author, David, is kind of saying, God, you see so much suffering right now. You, you see so many things. That <clears throat> and this is a, an early psalm, and it probably was written before David was king over all of Israel. Um, and one of the reasons we think that is because he talks a lot about injustice, and he talks a lot about bad leadership. And, well, he's, he is going to be the, the giver of the law as the, as the king of Israel, so it doesn't make sense that he is talking about, about bad leadership if, if he would be the leader himself. So we kind of think that this is a very early psalm. Um, and what I want you to focus on is, uh, and by the way, I'm reading this from my because uh, I'm here in the basement, and it was here in the bookshelf. This is my grandmother's Bible. My grandmother, Leela, read her Bible all the way through seven times a year. And uh, that was, it was kind of her legacy to us. She was a Bible reader and, and an ardent prayer. And, and so uh, I'm going to read, and so it's, it's King James. But I'm going to read just this passage 
Um, and this is verse 16 and verse 17 from Psalm 10. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear. These words of David, I think, really speak to us, especially in the time that we're living in right now, where we see chaos all around us. And you can vote however you want to, however the Spirit leads you, but you have to admit, <laughs> whether you're Democrat or Republican, we are in chaos right now. But it is a beautiful reminder to us that we are citizens of another kingdom and we're to have influence on this kingdom and we're to be salt and light and the pastor is going to talk about salt and light this weekend and I'm looking forward to his message but we're to be salt and light for sure but this isn't our kingdom we belong to a kingdom that is higher that is greater that is more noble than anything we could ever imagine and so when we're in these moments, I just tell you, my brothers and my sisters, don't despair because the kingdom that we are going to inherit, the kingdom that we're going to be part of, the, the, the heaven that we are going to be permanent fixtures in is going to be so much greater and so much better than anything that we experience today. And the governance is going to be perfect. There will be no need to vote. There will be no need to recount. There will be no need for an electoral college or anything else. It is God in his heaven, king of all. And this is such a sweet reminder. Let me read that verse, especially verse 16, again to you. The Lord is king forever and ever. The Lord is king forever and ever. I do look forward to celebrating in that kingdom with you. Till then. We have our work cut out for us. We will be, uh, musicians will be performing Sunday on the platform, uh, the small group for right now. And again, probably in February, I want us to fan out a little bit more as we see the COVID numbers go down. And um, this year, I think, is going to be an amazing year for our worship ministry. I just pray you hang in there, stay safe, stay healthy. Know I am praying for you every day. And I hope that if you have time that has been given to you because of everything that's going on right now, that you spend that time in sweet prayer to the Lord and get to know his favor even more greatly. God bless you and thank you so much. I'll see you next week.